You seem to have made a remarkable recovery. Earlier today, you were in the throes of a very nasty virus. Yes, well, a couple of hours in bed with you. You have the magic cure. <laughs> <laughs> Only we should thought of a different arrangement. I mean, I don't mind being with another man's wife, but to be in that man's very own bed is a bit awkward, you know. That's funny. You haven't acted like it bothered you. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was perfect. I suppose you would. What do you mean by that? I mean, a lot of women uh, like uh, the excitement of all the sneaking around in their affairs. That is why I thought uh, me being here would give you quite a thrill. <laughs> I'm not lying here to be psycho and analyze. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? I got somebody's here. I thought he said Logan was in Center City. He is. At least he's supposed to be. Raven, it's Geraldine. Are you in there? I came to see how you were feeling. Are you all right? How'd you get in? Well, my dear, I didn't pick the lock. Logan gave me a key. Did he send you to check up on me? Yes, he did. I went to see him off at the airport. He told me you weren't feeling well and that you were unable to make the trip. Look, all sick people need is a little quiet and rest. Can't I do any shopping for you and bring you anything? No, will you just go away? I don't believe this. I'll try to get back. Raven, you didn't have to get out of bed. I could have come in to you. No, the place was a mess. I didn't want you to see it. Besides, it's so full of germs, I didn't want you to catch anything. Well, that's very thoughtful of you. Look, I'm sorry, but I'm just all stuffed up and I don't feel very well. I, in fact, I'm in a rotten mood. I'd say you look remarkably well, wearing makeup. Well, I had to put something on. I look so pale. Did you have anything to eat? No, I don't have an appetite. Well, I think I should fix you something. Something light, maybe just toast and eggs. No, look, really, Geraldine, I don't some... need anything. All I really want to do is just go back to bed. What is this doing here? Um, Logan and I were drinking that. We were just celebrating his first campaign tour. This bottle is still chilled. Is it? Ah, still not tidying up after Logan, I see. Geraldine, I told you I don't feel very well. This doesn't look like one of Logan's coats. Well, it is. Raven, is there something burning in your bedroom? No, there... Geraldine, you can't go in there. Oh, my God. Good evening, Mr. Saxon. I thought it would be gauche of me to hide in the closet. I rather wish you had. Geraldine, look, you don't understand. No, you're wrong, Raven. I understand perfectly. So what are you going to do? Go run and call Logan so he can come here and throw his wife out the window? I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. Well, I'll tell you what you can do. You can mind your own damn business. Look... Don't ruin my marriage. Please don't tell Logan. No. I'm not going to tell Logan. It would break his heart. And I'm not going to be the one to inflict that kind of pain on Logan. You're a very kind woman. Do I have your word? Because if you say one word to him, your precious little family of me and Jamie and Logan and you is finished. Do you understand that? If I lose my husband, Jamie loses his grandmother. If you say one word, you will never see your precious little boy again. You 
You could have been a bit gentle with her. She had no right to come barge in on us like that. Oh, I knew it was a bad idea for us to meet here. Look, I don't want to listen to a broken record. <laughs> When she saw you sitting in <laughs> I thought she was going to have a stroke. <laughs> I knew I shouldn't have let you talk me into coming here. Oh, stop it. You're depressing me. I think it, that it's hilarious. Recognize her. I mean, it's been a long time since oh, I've very seen very funny. Hi. Hi. I told you it was going to be a long day. Yes, well, no one can ever accuse you of stretching the truth. Mm, supper ready, I'm starved. Two hours ago, have a seat. Uh, how's the kid? Oh, Jamie, yeah. he's just fine. He's absolutely adorable. Oh. We, uh, watch, it's a little hot. We, um, Missy built a castle with his building blocks, and then we took a long walk to the park, and we uh, went to visit my mother, business, and then the two of us took a nice long nap. Well, I wish I could have been here for the nap anyway. Yeah, well, come on, you have to admit it was really nice of Margot to give me some free time so I could uh, watch Jamie. And I was almost sorry to put him to bed. As much as I uh, love my job at MON, I have to admit it's kind of fun playing mommy and playing with a little baby. How was your day? First thing this morning, Logan came by and picked up Jamie's adoption papers. Good. I think it's about time that Logan be recognized as Jamie's legal father, considering he's his natural father. Well, as soon as Raven signs the papers, that's going to be straightened out. You went to court today, too, didn't you? Mm-hmm. I, uh, talked to Mr., what's his name, Mr., uh, Powers about his negligent suit. And then I went back to my office and prepared my calendar for tomorrow. Draper... You're taking on too much. Well, the way it looks now, it's not going to get any better tomorrow either. Honey, look, you can't keep up this pace indefinitely. You're putting in too many hours. You're taking on too much work. Let's go through this again, all right? I told you before, the average person who needs legal help... Cannot afford it. Right. So in order to get more money, I've got to have more clients. Simple as that. Draper, we're both, we're both making very decent salaries. We're, we're not starving... Mm. Well, who says we need a lot of money? I see. And you know why. Draper, I have already told you I admitted what I did was wrong, and the only reason Margo did what she did was to see that we had a nice home. April, this is not my home. I mean, I, I get very little pleasure out of living here. I'm not going to get any until I give Margo her $35,000 back. I understand that. There is something you could give Margo right now that would mean a lot more to her than a personal check. I'll tell you what I'd like to give Margo, but I'd probably be arrested for Oh, come for on, it. cut it out. I'm serious. Draper, all you have to do is give Margo a little kindness, a little understanding. Draper, all Margo wants from you is that you like her. So you want me to like Margo? Hey, for why don't you ask me to do something easy, like um, ski down Mount Everest? Much? By the time I'm able to like Margot, I'll probably be able to pay her $70,000. Draper, Margot doesn't want our money. But it's Margot's attitude that her money can buy anything, including affection. Oh, well, hell, April, you're a prime example of that. Look what she's done. She takes care of your every want. April wants a house. Margot buys April a house. Margot, or April wants a job. Margot gets April a job. And look at your salary. I, I think that, that Margot doesn't feel good enough to, to believe that people can, excuse me, care about her for herself. I mean, that's why she goes to all that trouble. Gives these gestures uh, to, to make sure people, people love her. And yeah, her, her money can buy things, but it can't buy my feelings, my affection. And the sooner she learns that, the better off we're all going to be. But Draper, I, I don't believe Margot means any harm. But she is harmful, April. I mean, the way she goes about trying to get love, I mean, it's dangerous. Strong word. Yeah. Yeah, it is. But considering the lengths that she goes to, I think it fits. <laughs> 